Ah. All right, what do you think these dots represent? Data. <laughs> what kind of data? What do you think the data represents? Ah, oh, no, but I do have one there of those. There would be a maps. lot more dots than that. Yeah. Uh, no, it's actually got nothing to do with the internet. Sorry to disappoint you. Incidents of sheep? No, but it is sheep related, actually. Sheep accidents, no? Any other guesses? No, but related. Stockyard locations. And I find, found this such an interesting map um, to look at because when I saw it, I realized I'd never seen data like this, like who would make this map and why would they make it? Um, but it's really fascinating to see and go, oh, look at, like, in the Gisborne region, I can't, for those of you that, I've got no pointer, but, like, the top right, kind of the big hustle on the right-hand side, you know, that's like the Gisborne region. I had no idea they had so many stockyards. And you look at a map like this and think, what does that mean for the industries and the communities around it and kind of get to learn about our country through a lens that we don't otherwise um, see. So, what is Wiki New Zealand? So we are bringing all of New Zealand's public data together in one place online and making it so that everybody can use it, so that it's visually explorable. And... Um, so, for example, if you look at this, this is data showing um, industry finance spend on R&D as a percentage of GDP. And if you look at that and um, go, right, what are the trends? What does it say? It's going to take a little bit longer than if you look at a graph like this. So I used to work at a think tank called the New Zealand Institute. And during that time, we did a lot of research, um, whether it was on social, economic or environmental kind of issues. And that we would always start by running the numbers and going, right, so how does New Zealand perform over time compared to other countries? Um, and then we would go out and present to a lot of people showing really simple graphs. And people would frequently be really surprised when they got to see data and see you know, whether it was New Zealand's GDP per capita compared to other countries or that we have the highest rate of youth suicide. Um, and so I came to, to realise that whilst there is a huge amount of data that's already collected, um, it is too hard for most people. It's not accessible because it's spread across like hundreds of different websites and held within thousands of different databases and spreadsheets. So data like the, um, the stockyards, like that's sitting there like, and it's just typically too hard for most people to go in and use to map. And so we are bringing it up one level into visual form but not taking it further. So we're not trying to tell people what to think. We want to um, work to, uh, for people about like how to think about data. And so here's a, just another little graph. So this is you know, like a typical graph that we'd have on Wiki New Zealand, number of visitors to New Zealand. You can see there Australia. China's just um, over the US now in the last couple of years. And, um, and it's been really interesting. Like I, so, I, so I had the idea for Wiki New Zealand about almost three years ago, actually. And we launched the current site, which you'll see at wikinewzealand.org. And that was just me going, right, so we, let's just start this and see what, what people think. We um, threw together like a WordPress template with, with some high charts um, stuff and, and just went for it to, to explore and see what people would think. And the response was amazing to see how many different uses there are for people with data once they could actually get their hands on it and use it without having to spend hours kind of finding it and, and thinking of the questions to ask in the first place. And so we've been in, on quite like a journey in the past couple of years since then. Um, like we won the Australia and New Zealand Internet Award last year because what we're doing is the first of its kind in the world. And it's been, because I didn't come from the data side of things, so the open government data kind of movement isn't where, where I started. And so I don't know that much about it. And so I just kind of started at the user end and thought, what if everyone could use data? And since then have realised that, um, that when people have been talking about you know, how to make data accessible for people and, and open data, that it has been focused on current users. And that tends to be people who want um, like APIs or machine readable formats and so that's what the whole kind of principles around data have been, have been set at. Um, but when I kind of started at this end, it's like, oh, what if a seven-year-old wants to use data? What would that mean for how we structured all our data systems? Or 
What if a 42-year-old tow truck driver in Hawke's Bay wanted to be able to know how many accidents occurred in his region over time? Um, what, would, what would that mean for data kind of requirements? And, and that's kind of set up the whole structure of how we've been building the, the new back end for bringing data together and how we display it, which um, Nigel will kind of do a demo of soon. So it's been really exciting, actually, just to to see like, when you actually empower people with, with information that they haven't been able to get before, um, the different kinds of questions people can answer that you don't even know to think of. Um, I had someone the other day, we, we kind of share an office space with the jewelers, and uh, the guy came up to me and was like, oh, you do stuff with data, right? And I was like, yep. Um, and he said, is there any way to know, like, you know how many diamonds get imported into New Zealand? And I said, yep, give me 15 minutes. And I went to the Stats NZ site and found the value of diamonds imported by month for the last eight years and sent him through a graph. And he was like, came over and was like, wow, so we you know, import X percent of New Zealand's diamonds. And, and I don't know what he's going to do with that information, right? But that data is sitting there. You just have to know what 18 clicks to use to get to it. And you have to know how to make a graph. So that's kind of our whole purpose, is like getting people to use data about New Zealand. And uh, not just public data, so also using um, private sector data. We have some companies that collect huge amounts of data, or companies like um, Chorus and stuff as well, that want to put their data into one place. Um, it was interesting actually having the, the realisation that New Zealand's data is essentially organised by source. And by that I mean if you want to use data, the first thing you have to answer is who collected it. And that makes a lot of sense when you are, say, a government agency and you've collected all your health data and you put it on your website and you make it available for people um, in spreadsheets. But from a user, that's as silly as having a dictionary ordered by country of origin where you open it up and you first have to know where it came from. You know, if you don't know that the Ministry of Health exists or you don't know that there is a survey called the Household Income Survey, you will never know how to, how to get to that data. So we're kind of trying to break that model where um, instead of searching by source or by data set, that you actually start just thinking of data naturally around what's the topic that I want to explore. And in terms of what impact um, I believe it will have is I think it's really, like if someone had you know, talked about something like Wikipedia um, before we ever used it and said I'm going to you know, make an encyclopedia that anyone can edit and, and anyone around the world can do it and add to it, I don't think anyone would have thought it was a dumb idea, but I don't think we could have really understood how much of an impact it could have um, and how we would come to use it like every day, multiple times a day um, for lots of different purposes. And similarly, I feel like... Um, when we actually kind of enable everyone to use data, that we can't even begin to imagine what the, the outcomes of that will be. Like I think sometimes around, um, you know, not everyone used to be able to read. And that meant that some people were, were writers of content, some people were readers of content, and others had like relied on those intermediaries to be told what, what was written or what, what it meant and what it said. And similarly, I feel like right now with data, most people have to rely on other people to translate it for them, to analyse it, or to tell them what it means. And so um, I think that it's just a whole new language that we will be able to use, that, that everyone, whether it's a seven-year-old writing a story or someone running a business or having an argument with a friend um, about how many possums there are and if they're increasing or, or de decreasing, that um, it will kind of really change how we can all we can all think. Um, and if you've got any questions as I'm, while I'm going, like we're a pretty small group, so just yell out. Ah, oh, but you'll need the microphone, I think, or we'll get in trouble. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, in terms of, of wiki being a wiki and being a, something that is collaborative, um, right now when you see the site, it's not really evident that part of it, but I really strongly believe that to get the, the best representation of data in New Zealand, that it will come from collaborating and from um, drawing from experts. Like we will never be the domain experts, probably on anything actually. And um, so to be able to have a system whereby experts are able to contribute and, and help with auditing of content and adding graphs um, and you know, making recommendations and helping kind of create the different sections 
is really valuable. It is different in that I think that data is a really dangerous thing for people to be able to um, play with live, and so there is like an auditing and publishing process. Um, but that that I think is going to like really makes it a, a really rich and kind of um, I don't know. It kind of one of the examples that happened early on was I had a graph that showed the official age of retirement for OECD countries, and I got that the, that data from from the OECD just as it was with the label and put it up on the site. And um, someone emailed me a couple of weeks later and said, "Oh, just so you know, like that, there is no official age of retirement in New Zealand." And sent me some links, and I was like, "Oh, really?" And, and realised that the OECD had kind of just shortcut how they how they named um, the data set, and so was able to then go in and edit the title and send it back to the person and go, "Right, you know, is this more accurate?" But there's no way that I would know that, um, you know, without engaging experts around the table. So it's it's pretty kind of um, it feels pretty special actually to have people that are willing to contribute and that care about their their content areas to come together and and create a resource um, for everyone to use. Oh, that was that one. Sorry. Um, but it has actually become to mean a whole lot more, like in terms of the collaborative nature of of the organisation. Like we've had, uh, it feels like we've had like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of people's time. Um, contribute to what we're doing and I'm sorry I don't have lots of cool um, screenshots and stuff to show you because we're just going live with the new version in about three weeks and three weeks right <laughs> yeah. um, but it's been amazing like every person that's part of the organization that now gets paid started as a volunteer and um, I didn't really realize the true power of like a like a crowd and people being able to when I think when you know when you're when you're selling a company and you want to go, oh, I've got this product thing and I want to sell it to you and and you know you try and solve it all by yourself and and I've worked in the private sector and software companies before with that kind of model and then when we came to making Wiki New Zealand, I thought it like it has to be different, like it's it is different and we and started bringing people on the journey and creating an environment where where like anyone felt like they could you know input their idea and help us expand it and. Um, the power of that is almost indescribable in terms of what we've been able to do and getting um, into like government and getting them excited about what we're doing and different agencies and, and different um, technical experts and it's, um, I don't know, I, I need to reflect on it a bit more actually because it's, it's something that I never imagined like when I first started, what actually happens when you go, hey, this is ours, you know, want to help me make it and, and what that means. So um, some of the the stuff that we've been doing. So when we when we first started, um, and we just kind of whacked up the current site and threw together stuff in the back end to see see what we could do. Every graph was made like from a different Excel spreadsheet and then uploading. It was just really manual and painful. But I didn't want to spend a lot of time and effort developing um, a whole system before we knew if people actually liked it. And so what's been really exciting in the past. Um, kind of six months is designing and going, stepping back and going, right, so people want to use this and so let's actually design it a, a bit more properly and um, and um, working with Nigel and his team at Opcode to help kind of shape that. And so I wanted to show you, we've only shown maybe like six people before, um, like outside of our little team, what we've been um, developing and it's really cool to finally see it live in terms of, you know, like all, all the data that we have is collected in pretty rubbish, inconsistent formats with Excel spreadsheets and merged files and extra columns and lines added for prettiness. And when it comes to doing something useful, it's um, not ideal. Haven't even got to uh, Silverlight plugins yeah. showing data. <laughs> so PDF, you name it, random XML, all sorts of well yeah, rubbish. Dave or random proprietary formats, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or formats designed by statisticians, like. The the legit the valid and stuff, but they're so hard to understand, and not for the average person. Certainly not. So, if we solve that problem once, hopefully nobody else has to solve it. Is the idea behind the system? We should probably show the spreadsheet first. The oh, original oh, no, one. Oh no, you're gonna do the um the, the easy one of these, and then I'll do the easy the one first. Something. All right. So, the system we are making. So yeah, source documents. Um, uh, files such as spreadsheets, uh, CSV files, and 
PDFs has mentioned, that come from sources which are places like Statistics New Zealand and so on. So we've got a whole bunch of these in the system already. The easy one was this one here, Time Series 1996 to 2014 from the Ministry of Education. It's a whole bunch of data that the Ministry of Education produces about um, students in New Zealand schools. So it starts out as a spreadsheet with goodness knows how many sheets in it. Uh, we'll show you an example of one of the ones that they give it later. Yeah, so we jump into here. Oh, in fact, the first sheet is a table of content of all the kinds of data that they put in one big spreadsheet and they publish. So if you actually wanted to know something from the Ministry of Education, this is the format that you currently get this data in, right? You have to download a big spreadsheet, find a table that you're interested in, and then try and do something with it, like use Excel's graphing function to make it chart, perhaps. So we're going to extract some of this data out of this spreadsheet and into um, a database in a much more usable format. So what we have here, along the top here are the sheets. It goes on and on and on. Um, this is student role by student funding gear as of 1st of July 1996 to 2014. This is actually a simple table, quite a simple table. This is a two-dimensional table. There are, um, this is school year levels, or funding year levels down the first column. And across this row is the year from 96 to 2014. So what we're going to do is extract all of this data. And the first thing we do is we take... I made a selection. Hey, how about you do the driving? Yeah, so I can hold this. So you take the funding year column and you add it as a key. Data exists as tables. Tables are multidimensional and have a set of keys. And each... Um, Thing of keys has a value. So in this case, for example, funding year, year one, and then um, actual year 1996 has the value 63863. This is just going to be a two-dimensional table. Quite easy to understand. So we're adding that as a key, funding year level, and then we're adding the second key here, which is the year in which that data exists. Yeah, and so now I can kind of select there. Like there will end up being like a lot of different units that are strong types. Yeah, so one of the key things about this system, it's different from a system you may have heard of before uh, called CCAN or other such examples of open data, is that often they grab just the raw data, the raw numbers, and they publish those to you. And typing information is not included. So you get given a number, but you're not told whether, for example, you get given a dollar value, but you're not told is this a New Zealand dollar in 2014 inflation adjusted with or without GST? Um, there are other examples of types as well that you get that are, that are crazy. Some numbers are just numbers. Some numbers are percentages. Um, such data, such typing information about data is not often uh, kept. And that's one thing that we do very well here. So we get to say that this is the... Um, the, the years are actually years. We say that they're years, which means that if the spreadsheet had um, like year ended 96, year ended 97, because some brain dead person who created the spreadsheet decided that, that was a good way to write them, our extractor looks at those, you tell it those are years, and the extractor understands that it can in fact pull those out and turn that into that must mean 1996, that must mean 1997, and so on and so forth. So it all becomes very consistent. And so, just, um, what the actual values are, the number in the student role, so I'll select number. Right, yes, yeah, so in this case, the numbers in the grid are just straight numbers, numbers of people. And thus, a table has been created, which you can see, what have we got here? So we have funding year level, the values down the left here, and then the year, and then the value for that. So the total in 1996 was this. The unit of those values is a number, and the number is called the student role at that time. Um, how many? This is about 400 being selected out of there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, so if you scroll down a bit, 
we can see that it's grabbed all of them out. So you can see all of the individual cells have been taken out and they're all stored in a nice consistent format. They're all strongly typed, they're all ready to go. You can drop the Excel spreadsheet at this point. Right? The data's in a nice consistent format in the database and from here we can move on to doing more interesting things with it. All right, so that's a pretty simple one. Here's another example of a spreadsheet that's less awesome. Where, for example, these, can you see my little cursor? Yes, the cursor's yeah, there. Where um, these are actually merged cells, um, and this one here is the heading, so it says gender, and then male and female, but these cells are, um, have been merged together. This, so, is, this is real data. This is a, yeah. Yeah, from the... Uh, MSD, Ministry of Social Development. That's right. Yeah, New Zealand benefit numbers, right? And so this is what they do, right? Like they, they create a table and then they go, we're going to put formatting around it. You know, like they've clearly managed to clear out the lines that the divide grids. up the cells so that they've only got grids in the place where the data is. Some of them do what? They put tiny little uh, one millimeter wide columns that are green to make fancy borders. These are done with actual cells and they color the background of the cell because they don't know how to drive Excel. This is the kind of thing that we are we are working with and trying to get around. Yeah, we were thinking of making like a, a mixtape of the re of our reactions when we when we come across <laughs> data sets. It's pretty um, interesting. Not PG thirteen. No. No, no. You get a lot of why would they do that? Kind of coming along. Cool. So we imported that um, that same spreadsheet here. And so yes, one nice thing about the extractors is you can see all the formatting has disappeared. We have only extracted the numbers out of it. We don't care about the formatting. It would be nice to fix up the, uh, the cell widths perhaps a little bit, but in general, the important information is there and all the extraneous fluff is gone. All right, so when we come in to extract this, do you want to talk about it or do you want me to do it? Yeah, you have a talk about that. Okay, so I'm going to add this selection as a key and call this um, minor categories. Um, can anyone, can you guys read what's in the cells or should I read out loud kind of what I'm, okay cool, um, and that's text, but of course some of these are kind of headings and so what we can do is split this key and then record the specific ones that we want to be marked um, differently, so that's the gender one, the ethnic group label, the age group and the continuous duration and stop recording and call this the uh, major categories. And this is also in text. And then we have this here, which we will add as X key, which is September 2014. It's the quarter. Um, so quarter. And in the, in the future here, the type will be added where that will become a strong type. But for now, I'll just put it text, otherwise I'll break it. Here are the benefit types, and some of these are merged cells um, again, but if we add selection as a key, benefit type. And this one, which is a, um, you'll see like it's like number percentage, number percentage alternate rows, which isn't ideal when you actually want to come and use it. So if I add the selection as a key and say type, and save that's text. Then I can say use this key when selecting the value units. And so when I don't have that selected, there's only one option for a value unit and value label. And when you select that, there's two. And it says where it equals number. I'll call that number. Um, and select number. And where it's percentage. And again, we haven't added percentage yet, so I'll just select number for now, but that will um, probably be there next week. Uh, and when I press save extraction, I'm going to, um, there's going to be some things that are broken, but I'll show you what we get so far. So it says there's some problems with the extraction, um, but that it has been split out. So age group is now, um, has, you know, is, has been separated out from the major and the minor categories, the benefit type, whether it's a percentage or number the value, etc. But I think there'll be two things broken. Oh, did I? Yeah. So one thing is that um, failed to pass the number NA. And the other is 
that the minor categories can't be empty. So I just want to show you how I'd fix that. Yeah, so NA is where the person who's made the data has actually put NA in the cell instead of a number. Yeah, Obviously so you'll see that kind of around here. Yeah, we can do a lot of Yeah, yeah, all, all sorts of rubbish yeah. people can put in these. Things. Oh, we had some amazing, we were trying to figure out yesterday, so there's, um, there's a sheet that Amy's been working with, where there's a cell, where cells that have N indicate less than 5, but everything in the spreadsheet has been rounded to the nearest 10. <laughs> and so it seems that N should really equal 0, but that also is incorrect. Um, yeah, so there's lots of like little things that we're trying to to build in and understand that again causes a little bit of colourful language. Yeah, Stats New Zealand for example, lots of the data that they publish, some of the cells will have S for suppressed for some reason, that number's been suppressed, or C for confidential is another thing that can happen from time to time, so we need to be able to deal with this. You can't just assume the grid is just simple numbers, not at all. So to, to get around that, I can just add a rule with the values and so when it is equal to NA, then skip this row or column and done. And the other thing is that, um, so right now some of these around the, the splitting of the keys isn't coming through. So this, this key here goes from B6 to B23, so it still includes the darker red cells. So I need to uh, add rule that when it's empty, um, because it's been assigned to something else, to skip this column or row. And so that sh should now work. Yeah, so all those NAs have been removed and... Um, so, so at this, sorry. Yeah, good. Yeah. At this point, just pulling the data apart before you start reinterpreting it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's like the, the extractor. Was that a question or are you on it oh. Is there any sort of audit trail for your conversion process? Like who did it and what decisions you made along the way about what the data should mean or possibly means? It's got a call on it. I'm going to hand it to you. Got, got it. Fully intended that there will be one, not one existing in the system now, but the way it's done at the moment, every step is stored so we know what was done, what happened. We also know who did it as well. And we plan for that information to be available all the way through the system. So a part hasn't been shown here, we'll talk about that a little bit, is the uh, part where charts are made from this data. And the plan is such that you could potentially click on, uh, you know, tell me about this chart thing, and it will go, well, this chart was created from data that was extracted in this way from this spreadsheet, or these ways from these spreadsheets. Cool. So that's the, um, the extractor part of the back end, and then from here, do you want to talk about the tables in the chart designer? Uh, the tab oh yeah, sure, okay. So we've got the extraction out of here. Something a little bit tricky about how these work is that they're constantly updating the data, right? So every three months, the uh, Ministry of Social Development publishes the next set of benefit numbers from the last three months. And so they put out a new spreadsheet and it would be a pain in the butt to have to go through this all the time. What's more, the new spreadsheet has only got the latest three months of data. And um, you know, it has data from the past five years, basically a, a rolling five-year window, but we want to kind of keep it forever, right? So having made an extraction, what we really want to do with it is create a table, and a table is kind of the canonical store of these um, extractions. A table is made up of one or more extractions. So from here, I won't create one from this, but you'll see a table looks very similar to an extraction. Um, again, same thing, list of um, keys and the values for those keys. Um, but an extraction can be made up of, for example, when we start importing the MSDs data, um, the five years of data we could get out of the first spreadsheet that they published in December 2014. And then when they publish their update in March 2015, we can go in there, we can make an extraction of the last three months, we can add it to that table so that we have now the table just being extended further with this data. 
So tables are really the, um, the, the store of data. The extraction thing is nice, but ultimately it all ends up being a table. From tables, we have a public API as one output. This is a HTTP JSON API. Um, so you can request all of the data from this table, and eventually we will make it so that you can request, you know, give me all the data from this table where the year is 1983, or so on. And so you can take all this into your your system and do with it what you will. This, the nice thing about this is that we'll also include the strong typing information, so that you can compare across data sets which is a nice thing, right? So Ministry of Social Development use one definition of the New Zealand dollar. You know, all of theirs are 2010 inflation adjusted, and then the data that some other place uses, they never adjust for inflation. We will provide it out the API, all adjusted in the manner to which you require. Um, same with things like miles versus kilometres. If a sheet, you know, this data comes from America, all the, all the distances are in miles, but over here, um, New Zealand's data is all in kilometres, then we will provide a mechanism such that they can all be converted to kilometres so that you can compare them consistently across data sets. So it's tables and the API. So Yeah, and then um, so the API will be available for everyone, but we will also use it um, to feed into Wiki New Zealand, the front end. And that will have, you know, ultimately tens of thousands of graphs and simple maps that you can kind of play with and explore. But um, we will be building those using something that, um, called the, the chart designer that um, we're creating at the moment that will ultimately be something that other people can use as well. And um, do you want to talk about the details of that, or do we not really know all of them yet? Yeah, so we have a hypothetical view of it because we're designing it now. Um, the general idea being that you can take sets of data out of these tables and just go, I want to chart that, please. And that's all you have to do. Um, and it will put them on axes for you and show you them, and then you can adjust it but and say, I want the data from 1990 to 2010 only, please, and so on. Where there were NAs, what would probably happen is that the, um, if there was a line chart, say, and there was an NA for a given value for a given year, you'd probably get a hole just automatically provided. The idea being that you can take data from any table and start playing around with it in the chart designer and make all sorts of different types of charts with data from multiple data sets. So if you want to graph um, benefit rates against cheese consumption, for example, it should be as easy as finding both of them, trying to put them together, and then start playing with how it looks. Um, yeah. So it's kind of one of my questions as well. Is there some way for you to kind of get some dynamic, uh, no, let the data be intelligent in a way, where you can actually have dynamic correlation, so let's say you've got all these various data sets and just throw them all together and see which data sets start to show correlation. So you know, like I say, you know, income versus cheese consumption versus you know, violent neighborhoods or whatever the case may be, so you can actually start challenging some preconceived you know, correlation is not causation kind of, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Is that possible? Yeah, so there's that website, isn't there? I forget what the guy's name is called. But he... Yeah. Uh, Get Mon Get Monday? I can't remember. The, with all the charts, the crazy yeah. charts, yeah. Yeah, crazy charts that show things like consumption of cheese in America is 99% correlated with like reports of nightmares or something like that. Like really, ran, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy does that, and we were looking at that initially and going, oh, it would be really awesome if the system could do that. And I think in time, potentially, it could. Yeah, um, it's not something that. You do right now. Yeah, it probably won't be this year, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But absolutely. But also, yeah. um, you could take our API and do that yourself. Yeah, yeah. and and then let us use that maybe. Mm. Um, and, but when you come, like instead of coming to Wiki New Zealand and it just being a chart designer and, you know, you have to figure out what data to use to build something, like when you, the I think the difference between a lot of um, sites that have data that you can do things with is, I, is that it's important, I believe, for people to come and arrive and see something to start with, because if you don't know how to think about it or you don't know what you know how to build a graph, it's, it becomes too hard. And and so we will, like internally and with a team and grow a team, um, make lots of graphs ourselves and put them on the site, and then others can come along and either create their own or edit ones that we've already created. 
In terms of what we're doing organisationally, we have been working with um, some government agencies and are doing a kind of a proof of concept at the moment to demonstrate the value of what we're doing. Um, with the with the goal of it being like an all of government service where we can do be the accessible data kind of dissemination platform for all of New Zealand um, government, which is really exciting. Question. You ever had any issues with um, copyright, particularly Crown copyright? We no. haven't yet. Um, but in saying that, we are taking a lot of the data that's already sitting there, that's already been made available but not accessible. And But we're trying to really work with the agencies, not just stand there and take things. And, um, and we're kind of, at the moment, with part of the proof of concept is defining a methodology with how we engage with everyone and getting them to sign off on the methodology. And Because some agencies are really um, concerned around like the metadata that follows the data through the system, which it does, and you know, when people take it out of context, what they can do with it. Um, so we haven't had big issues, but we're really cautious of that. Yeah, we'll work through that. Yeah. And while they have Crown copyright, that doesn't mean that they get to keep it to themselves exactly. Um, they are they're not required to release it openly, are they? But they are. Kind of... They are now, but there's, there are baby steps to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, um, I was just wondering how you, does your site deal with big data sets, like stuff that's available from data.gov.nz or reference there? When is you it, say big data sets, what do you mean exactly? Because I don't, like, there aren't many big data sets, like true big data sets, especially public ones. Um, we take a lot of the data from data.gov.nz. Yeah. Which, which kinds of data sets? Are you I, 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 I don't know. I can't pull an example out of the air, but yeah. um, I know that there are some quite big data sets available. I was just wondering, is there a, like a size limit to the data that you guys can deal with, or is it? have you thought about that? I, I can answer. Okay, I'll just borrow this one. Yeah, so there's, there's no real practical size limit yet, but we're also not dealing with um, the type of data that blows out to, say, many petabytes or anything like that. Like a lot of the stuff, as you see, is already aggregated. So um, you know, number of children on the school roll in this year in this form is already an aggregated number. If we were to take in, as perhaps what might be nice one day, to take in like a raw feed of that information and anonymise it and such like ourselves, then we would have problems. But right now, the data that we're getting has often already been aggregated. You know, number of cancers by year and such like that. These are already aggregated numbers. With that stuff, we don't really have a problem right now. Um, I'm not sure if we're in question time or if you've still got more yeah, to go. But um, uh, I'm just curious um, what your business model is, how you're funded, and also what your outreach is. Like, this is really interesting, but... Um, how are you going to get it out there into the hands of people so that they know about it and, um, and, and can start to use it? Yeah, all right. So a few things I missed saying at the start. Um, so we're a registered charity in the same way that, you know, like Wikipedia is a charity and I think people would d treat it quite differently if it was a commercial organisation. I set up Wiki New Zealand to be a charity from the start. But I do think of it more as a social enterprise in terms of how we behave. Um, I don't think New Zealand's large enough to to fund what we would need to do this well just through individual donations. So we've um, worked towards a couple of different revenue models, uh, one being the people paying the service to put their data on, and that's what we're working with government at the moment to prove that. So they're paying us to start and to do that with a bunch of data sets, and part of that will be to do a cost-benefit analysis report to say what this would look like going forward. And um, some of the private partnerships we have are similar, where they are paying us to put their data on, and then it might say proudly presented to you by Chorus or whatever. Um, in addition to that, and which is part of the, the discussion that I'd kind of like to have and to drill what you think, is um, what we're developing in the back end now with the platform, Grace, is it's, I think it's really valuable to lots, of, to lots of uses. And when I first showed it to someone, they said, oh, like I can totally, I already know who in the UK would want to buy this for the government there to use. And 
And I don't know what to do about that because I, I agree. I think that there is a commercial model for you know packaging part of this up as um, as a product and selling it either into other um, countries or other or large companies that have lots of data that want to do things with it. But um, we're not a commercial organisation. We our purpose, we're really purpose-driven. Our purpose is to get people to use data about New Zealand. And we've benefited hugely from, you know, open source stuff. That's how we started, was, you know, throwing things together that, that already existed and um, that were shared with us. And, and I don't know um, what the best thing is to do with what we have now. Like, at, at the board level, we've been having some interesting discussions because we're not in it to make a profit. That's not why we're here. But we can't... Um, you know, theoretically, if there was an opportunity to, to make money from what we have that can be directed towards the purpose of Wiki New Zealand, like that's what, as governance, you're supposed to do, right? Um, so I'm really curious about if there are, there are models or what, what you think, I mean, um, about how something like this could be best treated so that it is freely open for people to, to use um, and, you know, how you can imagine that working so that we would still have a sustainable model. Does that make sense? Does anyone kind of say that very clearly? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Are you, have you got a question rather than a, an answer? Yeah, to that? another question. Um, interest in media, have you been used as source for, by media? And the other question is how's your output and your work licensed for them? Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't answer the rest of your question before either. Um, so our two, we've got two kind of main audiences to start with, which is schools and SMEs, so small to medium business owners. And um, we haven't been trying to do like big pushes of people using it when we first, like I think we've had about 130,000 users or so um, in the last year or so, kind of making up numbers, but we haven't tried to do a big push. And now that we're building the new front and back end, we're thinking about what we're going to do for that. Part of that will be going into like into schools and, and talking to schools and universities about how people can use it. Um, and that's been really, people, teachers have been really excited about that. Part of it is um, partnering with people like NZTE or um, MB to go around doing workshops and, you know, with business owners to say this is how you could use data. Um, but I think one of the interesting things is we're almost going to end up with hundreds of marketing arms um, because when people put their data on Wiki New Zealand, then they start driving people to us and saying, oh, you have to go and you know, find our data here now. And then they're kind of advertising that to all of their networks. And then the people that come will stumble across other data sets. And um, when, we, when we started, like, we got quite a bit of media attention. And I did a TED talk and, and stuff. And we've just, I've just kind of tried to halt that a little bit until um, we're ready to, to really sell it. But, but I'm not. That, um, people seem to like it. I mean, it's free to use and it's valuable. So, it's the the spreading of it is not something I'm worried about at the moment. Um, in terms of sorry, media itself using it. That's sad. Um, that they're kind of like our next tier down of who we'd like to to focus on. But I um, I know that I almost feel like we need to kind of prove ourselves a bit more and have the brand. Um, uh, a bit more already, like, respected and known before media will take exactly like our graph posts and use them. But we're like I've talked to people about being involved in some of the journalism training schools and things, and they're keen to get me involved in that. Um, but I just want to be kind of ready and have everything a little bit more robust before jumping into that. Question. <laughs> uh, so through your work, um, are you actually from trying to foster the adoption and the use of permissive licenses like Creative Commons and GPLs and the like. So both from, from the people that you source the data, but then also um, the making the data available downstream. You know, so you know, make sure, try and encourage the whole ecosystem to basically keep the data open. Definitely, like all our stuff is like, is it by 3.0 kind of open Creative Commons stuff. We, if people have given us data that have different licenses, we'll display those and just retain whatever licensing they require. But to date, we've been able to get everything as 3.0 and encourage that. Uh, have you seen your suppliers adopt permissive licenses because of the work that you've... You, you've no, done? but that's probably because we're starting with low-hanging fruit and mm. data that's easy to use. and. What I think will happen is as, you know, the people that are a bit nervous about it don't understand the whole system yet. They don't understand 
how people will reuse it or the metadata that will stay associated mm -hmm. with the data. Mm -hmm. So once they start seeing that and seeing examples and, and trusting the, the brand more, then um, I do think that will happen. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there could be a snowball effect regarding that as well, right? Like you start out with people getting their data on it and then they see what people can do with it. And they go, wow, this is awesome. We want to be on this. And then we say to them, well, if your data is not Creative Commons, then it's a little bit difficult. And they go, well, maybe we should do that. Um, you talk about the trust of the data. Um, and at the moment, if you're, if you're thinking about something like Wikipedia, where you have lots of people guarding the data and making sure it's being checked and it's correct and the source and the veracity of the data is good, how do you do that with... Um, data that people are arbitrarily going to upload for graphs into the Wiki New Zealand space? Like, will you do secured pipelines directly out of Stats New Zealand where you maintain the pipeline and no one actually touches it, so you know it's a direct reflection of the data from, uh, from, from that office? Or how do you plan to handle that sort of side of things? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a really important piece that we'll live and die on, right, is getting all that right. And, um, you can't just arbitrarily upload a data set and suddenly have that as part of the system. It does need to go through our kind of auditing processes and checking and you can see who's changed what and, and when and why and that's transparent for everyone. Um, some of those processes we haven't defined yet because we haven't had to and when we start scaling out and having 50 people sitting around the country um, importing data, those systems will be really robust. We'll probably have um, everything imported twice so that you can, you know, compare and if they're, if they're the same then it's fine and if it's not someone's... Um... Yeah, totally. But I think the biggest way to get around that is just by operating entirely transparently. And if you see a mistake or if people know um, and then they feel free, like they can actually, that they're involved in the community enough to go, hey, this is, this is wrong, and then we figure out why. Um, I think that's going to be the, the biggest way that we win. That's it. And that's it. Yeah. Win through collaboration. Oh, that's the end of the <laughs>